My name is Major Sergeant Private Major, and today I'm going to teach you how to make the R0M4 quad barrel air cannon. We have a full demo video out on this magnificent device, chock full of ridiculous launches, from tomatoes to tennis balls to water bottles like you just saw. If you haven't already seen it, what are you even doing with your free time, recruit? I'll include a link to it in the description below. Go watch it, then report back here to build one yourself with your newfound appreciation for advanced pneumatic weaponry. That's an order. Now that you're well versed in the capabilities of the r 0 m 4 let's get into the build. Keep in mind this is a bit of an intermediate project as some customization is involved. Knowing how to solder as well as having some knowledge of basic electronics and Arduino code will be invaluable. Check the description for links to some of my favorite channels and videos on these topics. But just in case you don't have time to learn these skills right now, we'll also include a simplified design that requires no soldering or coating. As always, it's important to remember that PVC is designed for transporting water, not pressurized air. I'm assuming my own risks here, as you need to do as well. Stay safe. Here are the parts you'll need. First one's obvious, four air cannons. We have a step-by-step -step video on how to make these. I'll include links to it, as well as all the parts used in the description. Note that the video advises using Schedule 40 PVC. While no PVC device is immune to potential failure, we now recommend using Schedule 80 PVC, as this may increase the safety factor of your launcher. Number two, four solenoids. The male fitting added to each cannon sprinkler valve has quarter inch MPT threading, so make sure your solenoids are compatible and that they are rated for at least 140 PSI of pressure. Number three, a battery. Choose one that has a suitable voltage and max current for your solenoids and Arduino if you'll be using one. Our solenoids run off 12 volts and each consumes half an amp during operation. Since we're using four solenoids, we chose this 12 volt three amp battery pack to give us a buffer. Number four, buttons, a nunchuck, or other controller. The style of nunchuck we used has been discontinued for some time. This is a great opportunity to learn about making your own controllers, even one consisting of a simple set of buttons. We'll go over this more later on. Number five, miscellaneous electronics and parts. You'll need several male 2.1 millimeter plugs, 22 gauge wire or larger, wire nuts, and Teflon tape. Number six, which is optional, a circuit board and a case. If you plan to use one button for your build and want to rapid fire the cannons, you'll need to make a circuit board. We've placed our board in a 3D printed housing, but you could mount yours to a simple piece of wood or plastic if you don't have access to a 3D printer. Check the write-up linked in the description for how to make the circuit board. Number seven, an enclosure. Ours is made out of half-inch painted plywood as it's strong and relatively inexpensive. This is mostly for aesthetics and could be made in a variety of styles. Number eight, supports. Inside the enclosure, we have several blocks holding the cannons, preventing them from moving up and down, side to side, as well as front to back. Alternatively, you could design your cannons to be strapped down if you'd like, rather than held by these blocks that are admittedly inconvenient to adjust. You can thank our engineer, Private Sergeant Major Private, for that oversight. Number nine, a stand. What more do you need to know? It's a stand. Launching a cannon at ground level is no fun and provides you with little range to work with. Solution, stand. You'll notice I left the air cannon length and the enclosure design vague. This is because the exact size and shapes are not critical to the build. You can make them whatever you want to suit your specific launching needs. Bigger air tank, bigger boom. Smaller air tank, smaller boom. Ditch the stand and shoulder mount it for an upcoming paintball or airsoft scenario event. The world is your oyster. Use this video as inspiration rather than a rigid guide. With that being said, here are the dimensions we use for reference. Pause the video to look everything over, then let's begin. Start by testing your solenoids to get a feel for how they work. Turn the battery off, insert a male plug into the jack, then connect the tails to the solenoid using wire nuts. Red is positive and black is negative in most cases with DC wiring, and with many components, polarity matters. With solenoids, however, either of the two wires can be hooked up to negative as long as the other is hooked up to positive. Flip the battery on. You should hear a click as the solenoid valve opens. Flip the battery off, and you should hear another click as the solenoid valve closes. Using three wraps of Teflon tape, attach the solenoid to one of the cannons, making sure to mount the solenoid valve inlet to the male coupler. For the valves I use, the inlet is the side with the larger centered hole. Add in 10 to 15 PSI of pressure and repeat the test. If you hold your hand in front of the solenoid outlet, you'll feel a small burst of air upon activation. This release causes a pressure differential in the two halves of the sprinkler valve, displacing the internal diaphragm, allowing the air to escape the tank and exit the cannon's barrel. Next, we need to test all the cannons together with our completed electrical system. To do so, we will first need a completed electrical system. Decide how you want your launch to operate using the following scale. Level one, four individual buttons, one for each cannon. This is the simplest design and does not involve an Arduino or any coating. With some wire nuts, you can even avoid soldering. Push a button and boom. That's all there is to it. Level two, one button to rapid fire all cannons. This involves an Arduino and some code, but does not require you to use a wireless controller. One button rests on the back of your launcher. Press it for glory. Level three, a wireless controller program to fire one or more cannons. 
This is what we've done with the R0M4. Unfortunately, this particular controller has been discontinued and is difficult to find. If you're up for the challenge, you can make your own controller using an RF module such as the NRF24L01. Designing a controller with an RF module is outside the scope of this video, however, so if you're curious to learn more, check the links in the description for our suggested channels. For level 1, attach one wire from each solenoid together with the negative battery plug lead. Attach the remaining wire from each solenoid to a separate button, then attach wires from the opposite side of each button to the positive battery plug lead. Add 10 to 15 psi to each cannon, turn the battery on, then press the buttons one at a time. For level 2, start by preparing your circuit board according to the write-up linked in the description. Attach your solenoids and button to the screw terminals of the circuit board. The polarity doesn't matter, just make sure to attach the components to their correct terminals. Add 10 to 15 psi to each cannon, then plug in the battery and turn it on. Make sure not to touch the exposed cable end when the battery's on, as it's live with electricity. This design could certainly be revisited for safety reasons. Again, I divert blame to Private Sergeant Major Private. I just followed the blueprints, sir! You made the blueprints, Private. And? Once the board is powered on, press the button for cannon glory. With the electrical system completed, we can now build the enclosure. We chose to model ours after the M202 Flash used by the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger during his role as Colonel John Matrix in Commando. Absolutely iconic, but choose whatever you want. Perhaps you'd prefer a 1x4 configuration for side mounting your launcher. We created a box using four plywood panels, then used these support blocks to keep the cannons in place. These large blocks are made by tracing the end of a piece of pipe onto the side, then cutting out the area with a bandsaw or jigsaw, followed by a thorough sanding. The smaller blocks are cut from a 2x4 clamped to a table using a reciprocating saw or hacksaw. The gap needs to fit over the 1-inch adapters on the cannon sprinkler valves. Screw the large blocks onto the ends of the bottom panel as well as one of the side panels, then place two of the cannons down. You may need to rotate the cannons to get the valves to fit. Screw the dual-sided support blocks to the side panel over the cannons, then screw two of the smaller blocks to the bottom board to secure each cannon in place. If they're still a bit loose, remove the blocks and use some gaffer tape to fine-tune the fit. For the other half, drill a hole in the top panel to route the solenoid wires to the circuit board. We installed the grommet to reduce the sharpness of the edges, but you could also sand them down. Repeat the process of adding the cannons without the dual-sided support blocks. Now it's time to create your stand. Ours is made in two sections, with the following wood pieces held together by 3-inch screws at each joint. Screw the bottom panel to the stand pieces, keeping them centered for stability. Screw the enclosure halves together at the support block ends and check that the cannons are secure. If they're still loose, make adjustments to the block and tape placement. You may want to add a screw or additional blocking to the middle for rigidity. If everything fits well, you're ready to add paint. 2-in-1 paint and primer works decently for both the wood and PVC, although you may want to sand the glossiness from the PVC surface first to help the paint stick. Then follow that up with a clear coat. After the paint has dried, unscrew the two halves before carefully feeding the solenoid wires through the hole in the enclosure. Come on! What? Screw the two halves together again and install your circuit board in its case. Secure the wires in the terminals, then mount the circuit board case to the main enclosure. Attach the battery with a strap, velcro, or dual lock strips and you're ready for action. Load your projectiles, fill the air tanks below your lowest rated component maximum, aim your launcher in a safe direction, and fire. Well there you have it, recruit. Your very own R0M4 quad barrel air cannon. Keep an eye out for what's behind your target, and never aim it at anything you do not intend to hit. Remember, think of this video more as a collection of guidelines than actual rules, and don't feel limited by our design. We're here for inspiration, not to stifle your sense of creativity. Learn about woodworking, electronics, and pneumatics, and you'll be able to make all kinds of custom launchers. Come up with your own design and share it with me. I'd love to see your creations and all the launches you make with them. Please consider subscribing for more projects, and most importantly, thank you for watching.